Just hours after Uber CEO Travis Kalanick tweeted that tracking journalists is not part of the company's values and ideals, there's a new allegation. This time, BuzzFeed says one of its reporters was tracked by Uber New York GM Josh Moore by the ride-sharing app's Godview, quote-unquote, technology, which allows Uber employees to see the logs of customer activity. Uber sent Bloomberg this statement about Godview, saying, quote, Access to and use of data is permitted only for legitimate business purposes. Data security specialists monitor and audit that access on an ongoing basis. Violations of this policy do result in disciplinary action, including the possibility of termination and legal action. That's one of Uber's issues. Another is the lingering saga involving Uber executive Emil Michael, who said at a dinner party last week that Uber should dig up dirt on journalists unfriendly to the company. Some Uber investors, including Ashton Kutcher, the actor, appear to support that view, tweeting, what is so wrong about digging up dirt on a shady journalist? But at least publicly, CEO Travis Kalanick disagrees, ending his 14-tweet rant on the subject with the following. I believe folks who make mistakes can learn from them, myself included. That also goes for Emil. And last, I want to apologize to Sarah Lacey, at Sarah Kuda on Twitter. Sarah Lacey, editor-in-chief of Pando Daily, the focus of Emil Michael's proposed investigation, joins us now here in the studio. Corey Johnson, our editor-at-large, with us as well. So, Sarah, obviously, it's been an incredible 48 hours for you. I mean, first. more than that. I first heard about this from Ben Smith, and, you know, I feel like the story is really focused to me and Travis and, and Emil, but, like, let's not forget, this was said at a table full of journalists. Arianna Huffington, Michael Wolf, people from Business Insider, one thought this was wrong. One thought this was wrong and wrote a story under intense intimidation, and that was Ben Smith of BuzzFeed. And I mean, honestly, when, it, when he called me, I was on a business trip in London, and I, I stepped out to, to talk to him because I have enormous respect for him, and I couldn't imagine what was so important that he needed to talk to me immediately. And I was, I, I was terrified, and I you know, the plan as it was described was not just to dig up dirt. I mean, we're not talking about doing a Google search. We're talking about a million dollar budget, a four to six staff team to do opposition research on me. That's going through trash. That's following my kids. That's vans parked outside my house. And the idea was we're going to go at her through her family and we're going to destroy her through her family and we're going to do it until she backs down and no one will ever know that Uber did this. So and 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 one journalist thought this was wrong. So as soon as I heard this I was terrified but I also thought god Thank God you, he said it to a real journalist because otherwise he'd be doing it and I'd have no idea. I want to know how you're feeling right now because you've upped your own personal security. Security at Pando, tell us what you're doing. Uh, well, you know, obviously I don't want to deal, detail too much because the point is for my family to be safe. Um, I have two young kids. Um, and look, I mean, Uber's view was let's hit her at her one vulnerability, her, her kids. And, and they succeeded. I, I'm terrified. We have had to totally redo the security at my house. Um, I, you know, have, you know, personal security that with me and with my children you at all times. And, and here's the important thing is right now we're in this media firestorm about this, but Emil Michael has not been fired. And we see right after Travis apologized publicly in Twitter what will go away what there's no public record of they have their celebrity investor come out and label me as shady oh he backs away from it but I'm now labeled as a shady journalist he's now done a trial balloon of is this really such a bad thing they're starting to shift the narrative I mean you can see what Travis bragged about at the code conference in May this is a political campaign they've hired political operatives watch scandal so watch house close. of cards that's what's happening so when this yeah. dies down there's no repercussions. The board's done nothing. Investors are supporting it, as so we've seen today. What's going to happen? It's gonna, it, they're going to either go forward with their plan or do something worse. Because the story that I did that warranted a million dollar smear campaign, that warranted destroying my family, got nowhere near this amount of press. Got nowhere near this amount of people saying that they were, they were going to you know, take the app off their phone. Something bad is going to happen. Do you think that Emil should be fired? I mean, Ken Lara put up a post on Twitter saying that if it was a public company, he'd be fired. Exactly. No, I mean, I think the bare minimum we can all agree on is that Emil Michael should be fired. But 
this is a deep problem within the company. I mean, what as I've been living this horror for the last several days, what strikes me, and you know, one of the things that bothered me about Uber is whenever we would cover these stories about assault of, of female passengers, and we would call the company and ask them, they would say, well, she was dressed provocatively. Well, she was drinking. It was the classic blame and, and shame the woman psychology. Now, imagine a woman is attacked in an Uber in a way that could dent the company's valuation as much as my first article did. She doesn't have the resources of private security. She can't call you guys and come and get on TV and get her side of the story told. Um, I feel like this is not about me. This is about journalists. This is about women getting in their cars. This is about a company culture that thinks it can throw money to destroy people's lives and families in the name of a greater valuation. And it's about every single board member and private investor stepping back and being okay with it. People who've met my kids, people who've been at my house. In 15 years of covering the Valley, I've never seen anything like this. You have to wonder if the HP pretexting scandal came out now when journalists' phone records were tapped. Right. Would there be any outrage? It's a, it's Would Ashton Kutcher, Kutcher be fine with that as well? You know, digging up dirt on political candidates. This is a known tactic of political campaigns. Emile Michael has spent time in Washington. David Pluff obviously has a long history in Washington. What should someone like David Pluff be doing to manage this company's reputation? And how is it different when it's you and not an, an, a, an aspiring elected official? You know, I mean, I, look, I'm not in the political world for a reason. <laughs> like, I think it's incredibly scary. Um, but, I, I mean, what should he do? Well, it depends on what his goals are. I mean, if he really did want Uber to be recast as a friendly company, then, you know, perhaps they should start changing some of the executives. Because I don't think that you can just, you know, put put a new ribbon on that and, and make it look... Pig. Yeah, that's the phrase I was going to say, being from the South. But, um, but uh, you know, I think it depends on what his goals are. And I think, unlike um, a politician, Uber's not running for office. This is a company that we are trusting with our lives. People, I know people who put their children in Ubers to drive them around. Women are getting in Ubers very late at night. And yes, sometimes they're dressed provocatively. And sometimes they've had something to drink. That's why they're calling an Uber. That doesn't mean they should be victimized. And if anyone raises question, their personal life gets destroyed. This do is you, horrifying. Do you think that this was said to a group of journalists so that all of the journalists would disseminate the intimidation? Or do you think this was just some guy shooting off his mouth? It was not a guy shooting off his mouth. I, I'm confident of that, having talked to people at the dinner. This, he, he articulated a plan. This was not spur of the moment conversation. It was a plan. So do you but think, I think it was more than I, you? So I think it was, I think it was primarily about me. I think I was the first target because I'm a woman and I'm high profile and they knew they could go after my kids. But, but I do think I want to, it's one of two things. It's either they were putting the journalism world on notice or, and frankly it would work with a lot of people. They've done other intimidation tactics, not this extreme that have worked. Or it was, um, they don't think there's anything wrong with it. And so what are the plans that they wouldn't brag about at a dinner? That's why I have private security right now. I want to get back to this question of on versus off the record. I mean, if indeed both parties understood this was off the record, and, mm -hmm. and, and who knows what the understanding of either side really was. But if you hear something this extreme, do you break that journalistic code? Yes. And go <laughs> take it on the record? Yes. I I don't understand. I mean, look, like we, we, you and I, Beth, definitely came in like sort of the old world of journalism. I don't understand what's happened with online media today, where journalists are confused on where their loyalties lie, and journalists think their loyalty lies to a, a rich guy that they're covering, who's going to lie to them or say something horrific and illegal that damages someone's family's security off the record, and that that trumps that responsibility to the reader. I want to be very clear to any source of mine listening to this. My responsibility is to my readers. It is to the users of these right. services. It is not to you. If you lie to me, if you confess to a crime to me off the record, it will become on the record. On that note, there are critics of you who have said your coverage of Uber has been potentially unfairly critical and more critical than Pando Daly's coverage of Lyft, for example. Mark Andreessen is an investor in Pando Daly. Andreessen Horowitz is an investor in Lyft. How do you respond to that? It's such a silly allegation. It's the one thing that everyone goes back to. Um, look, uh, Shervin Pishavar is a very close friend of Travis's, uh, was one of the first big backers of Pando. Uh, um, uh, Josh Koppelman, also an investor in Pando. Uh, Matt Kohler from Benchmark. I mean, there are literally people on Uber's board that are investors in Pando. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a silly argument. Yeah, I would say about the, you know, the off the record thing is that the, the, the notion of being upset about on the record, off the record, the same, the same people would be willing to threaten journalists yeah. but are concerned with the same.
sanctity of on the record and off the record and, and is just threaten me in a way possible. where it's like you know and, and look there's people who say will you go after them yes I go after them under my name I don't get into their personal lives I've never written anything about their personal lives and I do it in my name what they were gonna do was dismantle me in a way uber's fingerprints would never be on BuzzFeed says one of its reporters was tracked by Uber New York GM Josh Moore by the company's internal God View feature, which supposedly allows Uber employees to see logs of Uber customer activity. Our editor-at-large, Corey Johnson, still with us. What is your take on this whole God View thing? I mean, Uber says, look, only certain employees can see this data. It's only for well, legitimate business clear, it's purposes. Legitimate business purposes. So we, as we discovered 24 hours before, they included legitimate business purposes included going through my garbage and having me followed. So I, I don't have a lot of confidence in what Uber considers a legitimate business purpose. Can I, let me, let me push back just a little bit. Did they actually go through with the plan to go through your garbage and follow your kids or was it just merely suggested at the dinner? Um, look, I, as far as I know, they haven't, but I don't know. Okay. And, I have no way of knowing. And do you think this is something that's pervasive of Uber's company culture or is this is a couple of employees who are out of line? You know what? I think it's somewhere between the two. I used to take Uber for a long time, and for a long time, you know, we've started raising questions about this company's ethics and morality since 2012, which is one of the reasons I was the one targeted. Um, and I still use the ride-sharing app up until recently because I really liked a lot of the drivers I interacted with. And I thought even though Travis Kalanick is obviously morally corrupted and has a board who will not stand up to him, I thought in spite of that they were doing some good in the world. And I did really like some of the things that they were doing. Giving I mean, they said they're employing 50,000 new people right. Right, right. But, but at this point, you know, we have all covered startups long enough to know that culture comes from the top and the senior executive sets a tone. And what, it, what we see over and over again, when Uber gets in these PR messes, they never fire anyone responsible. Now, what message does that send if you're at the company? I get rewarded for taking more risks that frequently involve putting women's lives in danger. This, it, it, I mean, look, look, you have young children. We all have young children. What does a three-year-old do when they are expressing bad behavior that doesn't get checked, doesn't get checked, doesn't get checked? It escalates. What's happening now is the biggest Uber scandal because none of the other stuff has ever been checked. The That's a culture. So you have Uber investors and, and people who haven't invested in Uber who wish that they did mm -hmm. calling Travis Kalanick you know, one of the best tech CEOs ever, comparing him to Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. I mean, you and I, I've talked to Travis Kalanick. He's, he's I've very convincing. He's, he's, he's very Uber. passionate. Is, is, is there something wrong with his strategy? With his I think there is always something wrong with no one questioning a founder. And what's happening right now is the board and investors are terrified of him. This is the first time in Silicon Valley, it, my time covering Silicon Valley, I have ever thought a company would be served by going public immediately. Because I think public market investors would not let one oh, person have this much power and control unchecked. But unfortunately in Silicon Valley, this company has gotten so valuable so quickly and the big mega multi-billion dollar home runs are so rare that people simply are terrified they will not do anything well about and the it. thing is this company already has hit a home run I mean they're winning the market so you wonder why why do they have to resort to what some people have called look I you know tricks. it's I know the plans of what was going to be done to my family. Frankly, a lot of the investors have young children. I think some of these people see Travis as this guy they don't want to cross. When this happened with Hewlett Packard, something similar to this, they, they were concerned about the board level, or the CEO was concerned about a leak, one of the board members talking to somebody in the press. And so they hire private investigators to illegally pretext phone calls, get the phone records of all these reporters, a couple of whom now work at Bloomberg but didn't at the time, uh, and go through their garbage as well, hire private investigators to legally go through their garbage. But there was a criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. Do you think there needs to be an investigation based on what's happened to you, if anything's happened to you at all? I don't think uh, we're at the point of a criminal investigation yet, and I think that is solely because of Ben Smith's journalism and Ben Smith's conscience. Um, I am preparing for the fact that no one has been fired, no actions have been taken, and as soon as this dies down, they will come at me in this or a worse way. I'm convinced of it. When it comes to data, Uber is certainly not the first company to struggle with how do they handle customer data from Facebook to Google. How should they handle the data that they're getting? Very valuable. <laughs>
you might ask. Well, you know, I think that we see, I mean, again, the, the, the examples of misogyny in this company are astounding. I mean, there's the whole glory rides thing where they were tracking um, by looking at the data patterns who was having one night stands and, you know, fist bumping and high fiving people virtually over this. I mean, this is a company that clearly is not just looking at customer data in order to route cars more effectively. And when you talk about the sort of data they have on you, they're making assumptions of are you sleeping with someone based on your patterns? Um, it's really quite scary. Well, in terms of the privacy, I mean, you know, you can imagine how a young company would struggle with these things. Is there a point at which we've seen this with other companies where, where privacy matters? You know, because we're in a different era now where, yeah. where mobile phones and, and, and people are getting types of data that they never could before. Does there need to be a different kind of privacy for all the companies that are in this arena? Look, I mean, this story is fascinating because it is a litmus test for Silicon Valley investors and do they have a conscience over money? It is a litmus test for journalists and will they stand up and say you cannot dismantle and does the First Amendment matter? And it is also a litmus test for the public. You know, in the past, people have voted with their feet when it comes to Facebook or Google, when it comes to privacy. But Uber is very different because it's the real world. Well, you're, had... you're getting in people's cars. Is that finally scary enough that it changes consumer behavior? And also, Uber, unlike Facebook, there are, are other alternatives. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know about you guys, but when I take any of the ride-sharing services in San Francisco, they have two to three phones on the dash because they're driving all of these services. Well, um, I, you know, I should point out, like, as, as frightening as this is, and, and I've been through this myself in different ways from investors, not from companies, but, you know, there are journalists out there in jails in, in, in Iraq or in, in Iran. There are journalists covering ISIS who are scared to death and have faced actual death threats every yeah. day. It's on a different level. We, I think we should acknowledge that at the very least. I think that's true, but frankly, if you're a mother and um, there are threats made against your children, that's... Do you feel it's hard to imagine anything really worse? But before there threats made against your children, based on what I've heard and based on what I know of this company, I'm convinced about that. It's frightening stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to be a tough journalist and, and write the stories and push them out, and then and but not sort of get that involvement. But I think you know, to Ashton Kusher's comment. I mean, Ashton Kusher was saying on Twitter this morning. Emily sent that out this morning to us, and and saying why shouldn't journalists be held to the same standard and i think that it's not really about that i mean what we do we should absolutely be held to standard but also what is but the same going through our, i mean this right. is how they're trying to reframe it they shouldn't and i think go through it's his trash very either. very careful for us to actually hold them to what they said and not allow right. them to twist what they said emil michael said give me a taste of my own medicine well to, i've never gone through these people's trash i've never followed their kids i've never hired a, on a million dollar budget a team of opposition researchers to go at their family and destroy them well let's them. be clear they didn't we, we're, it's not clear that they actually no, but the plan reason. was to give me a taste of my own medicine along those lines. And, and Uber, Uber spokesperson has said, we do not do this. We do not investigate then why haven't journalists. They fired this is him? not our policy. Then why haven't they fired him? If his views didn't, first of all, if the if what he said doesn't represent whose his views, whose views do they represent? They came out of his mouth. He's not denying that. And if it if they are horrified, if they found these comments inhuman, why haven't they fired him? Now, this is just one person that said this, right? Is it? Do you think this? Do Do you know that this goes beyond that? I mean, speaking of Travis, for example. Um, I, I definitely know secondhand accounts. I mean, I've not had anyone say it to me. And, what, and you think Travis was at this this dinner? Uh, well, Travis was. He was. Travis at the was at this dinner. But my question is, what was heard? Who heard? Yeah. what Emil Michael said, aside from Ben Smith. And, and look, I wasn't We there. don't know. The bottom line is we don't. I wasn't there. I know Travis very well. I think what concerns me is I also know several of the board members and investors very well, and I, I emailed them as soon as Ben Smith's story came out, and I'll name some of them, Shervin Pishavar, uh, Rob Hayes from First Round, Bill Gurley from Benchmark, and I said, I, I need to know, do you support this company using a million dollars of your money to smear me? Not a single one has even called me back or emailed. Fascinating. It's amazing stuff. It's amazing also the lessons from Hewlett Packard, you know, because a lot of people were still around. It wasn't that long ago. It was 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's amazing that those lessons weren't learned about why that's bad. It's also interesting to me that, that these business executives don't seem to appreciate the role of journalism and why journalism yeah. makes their businesses better, right. makes their society better, helps, helps their, their, helps their companies honest. start to get some attention when they come up with these great ideas. Would, you know, yeah, look, I had a, might be the idea of open table, but he, it's still a great he, idea. Here's right. a question. You know, Travis said executives and, and peep every, anyone can can and should be given the opportunity to learn from their mistakes should any of this be forgiven no I mean I, I mean no you have to earn forgiveness you have to earn forgiveness and the apology the, I mean have enough. you seen I, there's no actions there's no act no one has been fired 
And today, you see, again, Political Strategy 101, a celebrity investor who has a higher profile than anyone coming out, calling me a shady journalist. The same thing they do when women drivers say they've been attacked in their cars. Attack my character. They are doing the same playbook they outlined. I thought it was telling that in, in Travis's uh, uh, Twitter sort of uh, blast that he used the word folks, which is a word that President Obama seems to use uncomfortably as well when he's trying to seem like mm -hmm. regular people. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of people noted that he think he apologized to me at the end. Do you think any of this is going to matter to customers? Does this affect their business? I hope so, because I think that's frankly the only hope, because we've seen investors won't act. All right. Uh, you know, I do want to add that we did reach out to Uber and ask them uh, if they wanted to have a voice in this conversation, and they did give us those statements.